stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm joined by Zach, senior strategist and the editor of the Taser portfolio and the Healthcare Innovators portfolio here at Zach's, Kevin Cook, to talk about what's going on with generative AI with NVIDIA and really to give you some other ideas, like what else is there that's out there that you can invest in to get in on this big, uh, you know, surge in what's going on on the AI side. But maybe you've missed out on being an NVIDIA like myself, and you don't know what other plays there are. But surprisingly, there are a bunch of other ways to play what's going on with NVIDIA, just in a little bit different kind of focus. And so I brought Kevin on because he's kind of our NVIDIA guru here at Zach's to talk about it. And also for those who are listening, we're also doing a video podcast on this again, which you can find on zax.com slash YouTube. If you want to check out some of the charts or the other things that we're talking about that we're actually showing on our screen. But otherwise, I know you're all listening in. So uh, this is going to be a good podcast. And welcome, Kevin. Hey, see, this is a, one of our favorite topics, or at least mine. So uh, I know, uh, I know. That's why again. I had to have you on. Um, okay, so let's just kind of start with NVIDIA, I guess. Everyone knows it's surging. There's a lot of disbelief at what's happening with its revenue. Most of us who've been around for a while have never seen a company grow their revenue in this dramatic fashion unless they've launched like some kind of new cutting edge product like an iPhone or something like that. And that's like a once in a 30 year event. But now here we have NVIDIA doing the thing that none of us thought a company could really do. So what is going on and uh, what is your take on all of this like NVIDIA craziness? So you brought up the iPhone and I think that is one of the best examples. You know, if we're going to do a compare, right? So uh, maybe it's once every 15 years now because really this is an iPhone moment for NVIDIA and artificial intelligence. Um, NVIDIA invented the gaming processor, the, the graphics processing unit over 24 years ago. And I don't think when Jensen Wong was doing that for video games, he really knew when it would become the foundations for artificial intelligence. And that, that would be that would be like the first question I ever asked him if I got to ask him, like, Jensen, when did you know? What year was it when you knew that these GPUs were going to become the foundation for artificial intelligence? Well, that started happening. I, I just became aware of it like in 2016 and really got into it in 2017. And, and the revolution has just taken off. I mean, they did a, uh, there's a annual gaming conference that just finished up in August in Cologne, Germany, where all the gamers go and all, you know, game makers and all that. And in 2018, he, he did a demonstration of a couple of things that were like uh, CGI in real time. And they call them ray tracing and rasterization. And it was like, why, why were video games so complex and reaching like this level of real time CGI with light and shadows that, you know, I mean, it used to take years to make a movie like that. So, but though, but that's the R and D they did to create artificial intelligence. And now it's just exploding. So what happened is with, when chat GPT just like stormed in, to, to the economy and became part of the public awareness, all of a sudden, every major corporation, and when I say every major, I'm talking like not just the Fortune 1000, but you think about the global 2000 uh, major corporations that deal in data, they realized that they needed their own generative AI engines to be able to do this with their own data. Like Splunk calls it, Splunk says that like 70% of a corporation's data is dark and hidden, like they're collecting all this data, but they don't see it and they don't know how to use it. So a company like Splunk can help them find it. And then NVIDIA GPU processors can help them do about seven different things with their data 
that just go that just are accelerated way beyond traditional data processing. Yeah, it's interesting um, because I don't think most people realize like what it is that Nvidia is making here and how it works in the whole ecosystem, really. But um, you keep mentioning the data, and I know when Nvidia reported, it was you know this is in their data centers uh, segment. How does that all play out? Like these chips go into the data centers. Is that correct? Is that how it works? Yes. Uh, so if you if you picture a corporation collecting all this data from whether whether it's from the internet or uh, you know mobile devices or whatever they're using to to collect consumer data or even um, uh, uh, industrial data, like one one of the examples that I always like to use that's tangible for people about how machine learning works is uh, a little company called Alterex made a software platform where they helped Royal Dutch Shell monitor the data of their oil rigs so that they could predict when a part would fail. And that's extremely important to an oil rig. They, they need to know, like, have a rough idea of, like, how long can this part run before it's going to fail so we have to be prepared to replace it. So that's, a, so that's a, an example of a practical industrial machine learning model. And... Um, you know what? So, so Nvidia, uh, the the GPUs go into the data centers. And here's the simple example: like, uh, think about your your laptop or your PC. It's run on been run on Intel forever, right? And that's a central processing unit. And they used to be slow. You know, it was like a two lane highway. It's called serial, you know, serial uh, data transfer. Um, and maybe now it's a four-way highway. You can buy some pretty fancy Intel Pentium chips that, you know, but those are still CPUs, central processing units. So picture it like a four-lane highway. Well, GPUs are like a thousand piano players all processing at once. That So you've got your serial data moving this way at rush hour. What do you got? You got a traffic jam. But with GPUs, you're processing all this in parallel, not serial, in parallel, and it can just go a thousand times faster. So that's why uh, uh, Jensen Wong has always talked about this as being accelerated computing. Um, when and, and NVIDIA just keeps getting better at it. So in May, when they announced the a new chip version called the Grace Hopper uh, that goes in their DGX, the DGX is like a a box the size of a small refrigerator that holds eight of these GPU cards. And when they announced the new Grace Hopper chip, it was it was an order of magnitude faster than the previous generation. So, and right away, and, and Jensen Wong said in May at, a, at a, an event called Computex, he said, um, already Google, Microsoft, and Meta are customers. And once the world heard that, uh, NVIDIA stock took off because then they realized the rest of the Fortune 1000 is going to want to create these themselves. So they need the data processing power. They need to buy se several hundred of these DGX boxes, each with a Grace Hopper um, GPU card. So these things can cost anywhere from $150,000 to $300,000 each for one of these boxes. And corporations want to stack them together to have this what's called massively parallel architecture. So that's where the data centers come in because they need to house all this, right? right. NVIDIA is not in the, in the, they're not in the data center business. That you know, they're they're selling the the picks and shovels, but somebody else has to build the data center. Right. Yeah, let's talk about the various infrastructure now because you know, if you missed out on NVIDIA and you don't want to dive in here after the big move and everything. There are other ways to play what's happening with NVIDIA uh, through these other companies. Because, again, as you just said, NVIDIA is not building the data center. Someone else is. And uh, other people are even, you know, uh, servicing it, cooling it. Like, all these other things have to be done. And those companies are kind of in a renaissance golden era, era too, suddenly, because the demand is just that great. I'm not even sure how some of them are keeping up with what's going on. Well, one of the controversies with NVIDIA's earnings was that 
um, they, they blew the doors off. Like I, I knew that. Uh, so when NVIDIA raised guidance from 7 billion to 11 billion for the Q2, they reported their, their July quarter. When they raised that guidance um, in the spring, everybody thought, wow, this is a, this is amazing. You know, and NVIDIA started, got above 300 bucks. Uh, but I said, you know what? The street is still way underestimating this. They don't realize how corporations are climbing over the top of each other to build access to, you know, uh, what's called hyperscale computing or hyper, sometimes called high performance computing, HPC or hyperscale. Um, and that's what you do when you stack all these DGX boxes together. Now you can lease that time for $40,000 a, a day, or may, maybe even higher than that now. But uh, corporations would prefer to have their own because they want to build their own internal chat GPT, so to speak. So one of the controversies with NVIDIA's earnings is that not only did they, they blow away the streets expectations, they even blew away mine coming in at uh, 13 and a half billion for the quarter. And then guidance moved to 16 billion, which was like almost 4 billion for Q3 over what they like. How can this be? Well, one of the controversies was one of the data centers called CoreWeave. They said that CoreWeave got a loan from uh, Black uh, BlackRock. They got a two billion, two point three billion dollar loan, and and they were so they were financing their acquisition of of GPUs. And CoreWeave is like a uh, they're like a builder designer consultant, right? They don't they don't do your data processing for you. They help you build uh, your systems. Yeah, um, I, I looked them up after you with NVIDIA. Yeah. Sorry, I looked them up and after you, uh, you you talked about them, and they their actual uh, on their website says that they're in computing infrastructure, basically, like you just said. But yes. I want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah that, like you wanted to talk about data centers, and that's what they are. Well, the controversy was, well, how can how can CoreWeave go get a two point three billion dollar loan from BlackRock to buy GPUs? You know, and 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 is that how Nvidia beat? And so this must be a just a one off, right? Just a one off, but it's not. Look at uh, can you? I don't know if you guys can see my screen. I want to share this uh, report I wrote on you know asking if Nvidia is cooking the books. Um, so uh, this top quote: We had spent 100 million on H100s. An H100 is the the Grace Hopper, the newest advanced uh, GPU card. Uh, Venturo said, and he's an executive with uh, with CoreWeave. But the chat GPT moment was when I when I was like, everything we've thought from a scale perspective may be totally wrong. These people don't need 5,000 GPUs. They need 5 million. <laughs> and this was a quote yeah. in the Wall Street Journal on that morning where they interviewed uh, uh, one of the founders of CoreWeave um, on August 25th. So this is just an example of of you know the demand where even the data center guys are realizing and so this is real demand because and this is going to extend into 2024 for sure because um here's how jensen wong sums it up to put some simple numbers on it he says there's a trillion dollars worth of assets and data centers out there but they're all run or most of them are run on cpus and they all need to migrate to gpus yeah. so to him that's a tr that's almost a trillion dollar opportunity over the next four years because uh, they'll spend $250 billion a year to do it. Now, NVIDIA is not the only provider, but you can see how NVIDIA is saying they're going to do $16 billion next quarter. That's probably sustainable for maybe uh, four to eight quarters. Yeah. Um, I saw that CoreWeave uses only NVIDIA, so they they are their main customer there. Um, and also, you know, CoreWeave has several of these big data centers. They just opened up one in the New York region. And then in July, at the end of July, they announced a $1.6 billion data center going in in Plano, Texas. So that's where a lot of the 2.3, you know, the, whatever they're buying from NVIDIA, is, a lot of it's probably going to go into that facility down there. And this is just one one of these companies. Like, this is just only the beginning. Yeah. So, and, and you've, uh, you found one as a value investor. You found another huge player, an up-and-comer that, like, you know, I'd never heard of called Vertiv. Uh, yeah. So can you tell us about Vertiv? Because you're the expert there. 
Well, Vertiv is also on the infrastructure side and like uh, data center services. So uh, they also are helping companies kind of in the consulting area, that kind of thing to get their data centers up and running. And that business is just boomed as well. So, you know, they, they are seeing the results of all this that's going on in the rest of the, you know, channel of, of AI basically on the chip side. And now, um, you know, going down downstream, so to speak, uh, kind of like energy. Um, but just looking at Vertiv, it's ticker VRT. While you're, ta- while you're talking here, I want to show, I want to show a chart. Yeah, I want to show a chart of uh, Vertiv right here. So I'm going to blow this up. And um, like, so when did you get in? Like May or June when it was like around 20 bucks? Yeah, yeah. A number of months ago. And even then it was yeah. at, it was, it was surging already. And it's hard for any investor, you know, yeah. after you've seen a big move in the stock to, to jump in there. I think it had already doubled or something year to date. And, but it was cheap. It was trading under 20 times. It's peg was low. The price to sales ratio, like all this other stuff was still cheap. They, they had already been reporting earlier this year because NVIDIA was already seeing it about the data centers and the hot business there. So we dove in and then the last earnings report was basically similar to, to NVIDIA's. They, they crushed it out of there. They're expected to grow earnings 200% this year. So yeah, they're, they're seeing the downstream benefit and, you know, I see sales expected to be up 20% uh, year over year here too. And so this is one of those companies that it's more expensive now because it has kept running as you can see on that chart, but it's still only trading at about 24 times and its other metrics are still lower. Its peg is still great. And so I still really like Vertiv here because it's like CoreWeave, but CoreWeave is private. So we can't get in and invest in that yet. Uh, but Vertiv, we can. And right. this is one of those companies that's going to just be one of the beneficiaries of, of this, this transformation into the AI. Yeah. And I think it would help if we, if we uh, talked a little bit about what the goal is of these corporations with, with their data, with all this, you know, I call it a deluge of data. Splunk calls it dark data where the, they're collecting all this and it's all in all these log files and they don't know how to use it. Like yeah. we hear the terms AI and we hear, you know, generative AI, but what are they actually doing? And so I, I, I like list about six or seven things that people should think about that corporations are doing. First, they can take all that data and model it somehow and see, does it tell them anything? Does it give them any new information? And uh, then they maybe can make forecasts, right? They can make forecasts about their business, about an industry. Um, They can also turn things into visualizations, right? Like, you know, all these fancy graphs that we see from uh, not not just, uh, you know, Statista, but anything where you can, uh, you know, create bubbles, right? Like if you can create, uh, you know, uh, bubbles to show the, the impact size of a company in an industry or its its valuation, there's you know hundreds of visualizations that you can do with your data too. That where it speaks to people, like show me a picture of the data, and then I can understand it. Um, now, but now it's getting more intense because Nvidia specializes in something called simulation, where uh, a company can take the data with the model, and without a forecast, they can just run simulations. Like, what if we uh, apply these variables. And I'll give you an example. Um, when th- this is about five years ago, BMW adop- adopted NVIDIA technology to simulate the building of a new factory. Because obviously, f- the auto manufacturers, it's full robotics, but they have to plan this stuff out quite a bit. And so uh, BMW was able to take NVIDIA architecture and create a digital twin of what the factory, how the factory would run, and then just run simulations to test its efficiency before they invest all the capital to build it. Um, Then automation. I I gave the example before about how you could set up a machine learning program to monitor an oil rig's uh, machinery to predict when it might break down. Well, you can do that in any industry now. 
And then there's just science, right? Like science is just exploding, whether it's genomics or studying climate change um, or any aspect of healthcare, cancer diagnostics. Like this is it, what I always tell people, go to the NVIDIA newsroom. Like that's one of my favorite places to visit. And I, I had that up here earlier. So you can go to the, just Google NVIDIA newsroom or NVIDIA blog once a week. And you will find at least five new stories about, about how GPU architectures are being applied for machine learning, deep learning, and what we call AI. Because AI is like this big, broad category, but within it are you know machine learning, deep learning, and then just all this data modeling. And it just allows, it allows corporations to innovate, but also allows scientists to solve problems that they've never had access to before because they can, they can process trillions of data points per second and then model, uh, model a complex system. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of good ways to look at AI for sure in that list you just gave. Um, let's talk about some more on the, like, say, down the chain type of companies that uh, I've been discovering as a value investor. <laughs> yes, these are still values. So a uh, value investor bought a company called Sterling Infrastructure and it's ticker STRL. And it's... Uh, it's a construction firm in Michigan. And, you know, so you might think, oh, that's kind of boring, but we bought it originally in the portfolio because the infrastructure bill passed and they, they're doing infrastructure. Like, you know, there's going to be charging stations built and broadband expanded and all these things going on through the infrastructure bill. But what I didn't realize is, oh, we're about to have this big build out in the data centers. Like I mentioned earlier, CoreWeave is, you know, building that one in Plano. Well, someone has to build it. And that's what Sterling is doing. They do have an e-infrastructure type of division. And before it used to be they were building the distribution centers, right, for Amazon and Walmart and all those places. That was a boom, too. Okay. But now they're adding into data centers. And they, they said last quarter as well, oh, the data center side is real hot. And that's got to be picking up steam, too, because this stuff has to be built. So Sterling is really taken off this year. It's up 80% year to date. Uh, that's not too shabby for this smaller, you know, construction firm. And it's at new all-time highs. And it's still fairly cheap. It has a PE of 20, it has a peg under one still because those earnings are surging. They they beat like several quarters in a row now. And um, you know, it's expected to continue and earnings expect to be up over 20% here this year, year over year. So I like these little kind of companies that are in the background that, you know, are, are going to see the surge in business because of what's going on at NVIDIA. And then another one that I also just discovered uh, through just running value screens is called Modine Manufacturing. And this is up in your home state, Kevin, of Wisconsin. And it, it, and you wouldn't think like, oh, I can find an AI play in Wisconsin right now, but you can because Modine, one of the things they do is cooling, like HVAC. And a lot of it is commercial. Okay. And so what do these huge data centers do if you're building that one in play now and it's 110 out there and you've got all these uh, you know, chips in there, you certainly don't want a meltdown or whatever going on in there. So a lot of cooling. Right. And they too said they're seeing a, a surge in business from the data center side of their business that is, you know, really giving them a boost. And they are uh, up 46% year to date as well. All of these uh, charts kind of look the same. They started taking off when NVIDIA did a couple of months ago and now people are discovering, hey, you know, the maybe the the secret word isn't AI on the conference call anymore. Maybe it's data centers. <laughs> maybe that's the key word because right. all all these three, you know, Vertiv, Sterling, and Modine all saw a huge pop after this last uh, earnings report for Modine. It was like the second uh, record quarter in a row for them. So they're really turning it around, but stock is still cheap. It's trading at 18 times. It too has a peg under one at just 0.7. So um, I like finding okay. uh, these. You look at 
Yeah, you've done a great job with this. You found three derivative plays, one, one in construction, yeah. uh, one in uh, cooling, um, you know, and then the actual building of the of the, of the data center. Um, do you look at price to sales too? Because it's like, you know, that seems to be where you, you see that acceleration. Like all of a sudden, the company is growing its sales much faster than, uh, you know, than its valuation, than its, than its um, market cap. I do. Uh, that's definitely in the screen. And all three of these have very good price to sales ratios too. Um, maybe not quite as cheap on some of them as I would necessarily, you know, screen for, but let me look now. Um, taking a look at Vertiv here. Let's see. Uh, well, Vertiv is at like 2.3, but, you know, compared to NVIDIA's price to sales ratio, you know, this is yeah. dirt cheap. Yeah. And, yeah. And how fast, how fast is it growing its revenues? Like what's the revenue growth this year and next year? That that's probably, you know, solid double digits. Yeah, for some of these. Sterling, it's still single digits because they still have these other divisions and things. And they're just not, they're not able okay. to do the double digits, not yet, at least. And you also have to remember with some of them, uh, kind of like a home builder would be like for Sterling, you know, you, you only have so much manpower to actually go out there and build it. A lot of uh, this recent surge is going to go into their backlog to some extent. You know, they're not like just necessarily rushing out the next week and starting these projects it has to kind of go into the the queue so to speak and then they will get to it but these are you know some tremendous uh numbers that they're all posting and um i'm just taking a look here sterling infrastructure price to sales ratio is 1.3 so they're that's cheap for them and then let's see uh I think Modine was the other one, right? We didn't look at it. And these are all Zach's number one ranked stocks too because the analysts were kind of, have been caught. There, there's not a lot of analyst coverage on any of these three companies because they are smaller. Although Vertiv is, um, you know, a, almost a large cap here, I believe. But it still doesn't have as much coverage as obviously like NVIDIA or these other tech type of names. So the analysts kind of behind the ball because... I mean, none of us were expecting this to happen. And so they're all trying to catch up. So I see Modine price to sales ratio is 1.08. So yeah, very yeah. cheap. Yeah, those, on the are, sales all, those are all values. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk yeah. about software for a second before we go, because okay. uh, you know, the, the one thing that I, I left out of the discussion is the, the other reason that NVIDIA has succeeded is because they integrated a full stack, like an ecosystem of hardware and software together. So they've they've all they basically built a moat because they're just so good at combining hardware and software. Uh, they call their system CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture, and and just like that's the that's the premier brand. Like AMD is right in there, and AMD will catch up. But uh, AMD can't right now can't seem to provide the quantity um, at the level that NVIDIA does. So that's why NVIDIA is, is basically got this moat now still for a couple more years. And speaking of software, I have one derivative play. You, you have three for the, <laughs> for the AI revolution. I, I've got one, and that's a company called Cadence Design Systems, uh, CDNS. They make the software that designs chips. So when a when a, an engineer sits down to design, design a chip, they're not playing with anything physical. You know, they're doing basically uh, CAD CAM, like the old Autodesk CAD CAM, but it's like fifth generation CAD CAM in Cadence, where they can model all those transistors. And this is extremely important because, as you know, um, microchips and integrated circuits they've gone down below ten nanometers. I mean, for for scale size the coronavirus is 50 nanometers big and we're designing chips with you know channel architecture pathways and gateways that are that are less than 10 nanometers apart from each other so this is like incredibly small microscopic um architectures and so that's why they need a company like um cadence 
and what Kate and the reasons Cadence is so important to NVIDIA and their partners is because they they do everything on simulation too, right? You simulate it on your on your software engineering platform before you go and send it to Taiwan to get built by Ty Taiwan Semi. So that's my only derivative play for NVIDIA. So I, I'm taking a look at Cadence's chart and I see it's up 53% year to date. Should investors be chasing it here? You know, like we are with all of these, they're all surging. Should, should you know, it's, be... it is not cheap. It is not cheap, but it's, okay. it's, I, I call it a part of a duopoly. It's main competitor is called synopsis S S N P S. And they both trade like, you know, 20 times sales or more. Uh, but they move in lockstep with NVIDIA, you know, and especially okay. since Cadence is an NVIDIA partner, um, it just, when Cadence finally broke out above 200, uh, hung out or around 230 for a while, and as NVIDIA moves higher, Cadence moves higher. So it's just, uh, I, I think, um, I, I own it, and I have no interest in selling it here. You know, I think it, okay. it'll continue to be a long-term play that just that just keeps getting better, especially as more chip companies, say an Intel or a Qualcomm want to, you know, begin experimenting with their own GPU products, say on the edge of the cloud. Okay. I see that sales expected to be up 14.5% this year and earnings up 19.2% in 2023. So that has all the, the hallmarks of the growth stock though, you know, yeah. it may not be cheap, but that's, you don't care. You're paying for the growth. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, Cadence because I've not been following that one, but this is a good discussion because it gives investors on both ends. If you are a growth investor, you have some growth options. If you're a value investor, you have some value options, but it's a good reminder that it's what's going on is more than just NVIDIA. It, it, it is this whole, you know, ecosystem that's going to develop around AI. There's going to be a lot more companies than just these that we mentioned, but these are the ones that are seeing, you know, the real impacts like in real time right now on what their earnings and their revenue is doing. So I thought it was, you know, pretty vital to, to do this podcast as quickly as we can to kind of get the word out there. Cause I know a lot of people are, are kind of depressed if they missed out on NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah. you know, don't and, know what to do. You know, when, when people when people hear data center, you know, they might think of you know Facebook or Meta, right? Know, or Google. Right, for sure. And and it and it and that's uh, there's sort of a stigma there, right? It's like, why would right. I care? You know that that Facebook and Google are just collecting all of our data, and they need bigger data centers to process it. Well, right. I, I get that. I, that's yeah. a that's a valid concern. But for every Google and Facebook meta out there doing that, collecting our consumer data, there are hundreds of companies doing good with their data, especially in in scientific realms. You know, if, if somebody's, yeah. uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, drug modeling or cancer diagnostics or uh, uh, studying climate, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's so much that can be done with these tools once they're plugged in in a data center where they can just process massive amounts of data using these massively parallel architectures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me recap the stock tickers we talked about. So there was NVIDIA, of course, NVDA, if you already don't know it. Uh, we had Vertiv, V as in Victor, R as in Robert, T as in Tom. There was Sterling Infrastructure. Someone's got to build this stuff. That's S as in Sam, T, R as in Robert, L, S-T-R-L. Then we had Modine Manufacturing, ticker M-O-D. They're in the cooling side of things. And then we had Cadence Design Systems, C as in Cat, D as in David, N as in Nancy, S as in Sam. And as always, I'm bringing you whatever the hot topics are. And right now, it's certainly NVIDIA and AI. So that's what we're bringing. But every week, we're going to be bringing you uh, more stock ideas and what's going on out there in the economy and the stock market. So be sure to subscribe. Get us on Apple. We're on Amazon Music. We're on Spotify. And you can always get these video podcasts now 
on our YouTube channel at zax.com slash YouTube, or just put Zax Investment Research into your search bar there and you will find us. But be sure to get us somewhere and I'll see you again next week with some more stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.